Good morning, my friends. This is The Fjord, joined by Esmir Vito, here for a match of the top eight for Battle for the Bob. We got Connor's Abzan midrange versus maybe Lotus's Dan's Mono Black Devotion. What do you think of the matchup, Mirabito? Woo, my God, Fjord, you uh, <laughs> stopped my heart, dude. I was not, <laughs> not expecting this much aggression on a Sunday morning. I'll tell you what. <laughs> oh, gotta man, get I, hyped. I, I gotta, gotta get hyped. You know, man, I'm so, so excited to be uh, watching and commentating on this match. Um, we have two of my some of my personal favorite decks uh, duking it out here. Um, we have Mr. Maybe Lotus's Dan on what we dubbed to be the Jund of the format. Um, you know, having a lot of efficient threats, a lot of removal spells, uh, value. But we're in kind of a mid-range mirror, which is so funny to see in our five ticks modern. I was so pleased that mid-range found a way to exist and to thrive in this uh, format. Oh, well, absolutely. And I got to say... I am extremely happy that Connor not only has made it with the top eight with this card, but has found a way to, uh, in my opinion, fully utilize the power of lingering souls he to did. his advantage. He did indeed. In these, uh... And also, he's just, he's just, oh my goodness, is it's like 2013, 2014? Uh, I forget the year, but a putrid leech just attacked <laughs> and paid two life to pump up. We just got a lingering souls. This is just, we're living the dream here. You know, this, can, this is some this is some old school Abzan going just, on right we now. Can just forget about modern now. <laughs> Real modern, we don't need that. We don't need that nonsense. Five ticks modern. That's the way to go here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we have an interesting decision already here um, from Mister Maybe Lotus's Dan. Um, if I'm not mistaken, his Timurit, um has the ability to eat that lingering souls. Is that right? Uh, I believe so. Yep. Because like, I think it can eat... It's just like Scavenging Ooze, where it, it can eat anything in the graveyard, but only gets a bonus if you eat a creature, I believe. Um, yeah. Interesting choice here that we are attacking with full... Or attacking in here and offering the trade with the spirit tokens. Um, I think uh, that's probably a sign that Dan really values those uh, spirit tokens. But, um, yep, and we see Timurit activate on the graveyard, already getting some value there. Um, I think I think that's really smart. Uh, I would jo all joking aside, I do think uh, game one anyway. Uh, I think lingering souls is going to be really good for Connor, just because Dan doesn't have any uh, sweepers. Like main board, he only has uh, spot removal and edict effects. Correct. correct. So that card is really going to be able to help uh, Connor out. I think game two is really where Dan starts getting the help with. Sure. Uh, with uh because he has a couple sweepers uh sideboard to bring in that makes sense yeah the, the, i think that totally makes sense but hey we've got a we've got a pretty pretty great start here from connor i mean we're on the the aggressive plan here we just hit for six we're already yeah uh, he's, half our life total here yeah no, connor's uh connor's really going at it uh i think dan i think if dan can remove the uh putrid leech i think he'll be able to start uh kind of getting things here but connor's got sure. a pulse in hand too so oh. like it's He's got a decent hand, and he still can he can keep going at it. Right, and we're um, we're ticking up on our Davriel. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of our Chittering Rats. Uh, I think correct to play get rid of the Chittering Rats. There we have um, a little bit of a situation where you know Connor's about to be empty-handed anyway, and uh, Chittering Rats may just may miss honestly on Connor's hand here. Um, but also on top of that, we have some uh, Garal's Messengers to cast, and I think that might be a way we get back in this. Um, or yeah, potentially I, I just believe, cast. Yeah, they, looking at, go ahead. Uh, I was just saying, looking at Dan's hand, I think uh, Tutoring Rats was easily the weakest card. Sure. And I think that it's just, quite frankly, it's too late in the game for it to make a huge impact. Right. Uh, I think Draw's Messenger is really where you want to be, especially considering uh, Connor's lack of uh, exile based. Uh, yeah, no, he does no, have two he, path to exile. He does have the path to exile. So he's two paths. Answer, yeah. But um, he doesn't have any in hand right now. And I think Draw's Messenger can play a fairly similar role as Lingering Souls is a very uh, hard to remove threat Correct. for uh, Dan. Definitely, definitely agree there. And, you know, I think there was maybe some consideration to play a Gifted Aetherborn. I, it does kind of stonewall the um, Putrid Leech, but uh, I, I do think that it was. Per potentially more mana efficient here to play the three drop 
you know, if we untap and draw a swamp, then we can double spell. And I think if we're actually able to hit a swamp and double spell, I think we're going to be able to pull back ahead. Oh, what a top deck! Yes, though. and we hit the that was that was an absolutely fire top deck. Fire and it looks like Connor's deck. going to clear the board. Wow! And you know he's going for the win. He can pump up a. Wow! This is crazy. Yeah. Oh my gosh! We're just going for it. Just ruthless. Yeah. Just get into beat town with putrid leech. Oh my goodness! That was a that was a an incredibly good top deck. It was an an amazing turn from Connor here. Really putting uh, Dan on the back foot here. Now we just have Gifted, Gifted Etherborn to hold down the fort. And uh, if we see a removal spell for Gifted Etherborn, the game's just over. The game just ends Yeah, and Connor, Connor does have a good number of them in the deck. He certainly he's does. He's got Fatal Pushes. He's got another Path. Yep. Uh, he's got a couple of Eliminates, even. Gosh, he does he's... not find it, though. He finds a land. He does have two Chromatic Star Cracks, though. He's he got two Redraws to here. Try and, uh, yeah, so he can try and draw into it. All right. It's going to be a sweat. Let's see what we draw here. Right. Draws another land. All right. How lucky are we feeling here? Well, I'm counting uh, three, four, five, six, seven removal spells he can draw into. Oh, a so I needed not hit some. It was a, it's a hand disruption spell, which actually is not which... great here because we already have the Davriel. But potentially, uh, actually, it's it's not awful though because it does hit the messenger. True. So uh, Davriel can stick around to ping uh, Dan. Right. So um, if right. Connor swings in with his two spirit tokens, that's it. I believe that's that the game. may do it. Yeah. Because he can't yeah. block with the gifted Etherborn to gain the life. Yeah, and oh it's Davriel deals two damage at the upkeep. Oh my so, gosh, this has been. That was uh that was a pretty was incredible Im uh an impressive showing from modern all former modern all-star putrid leech yeah putrid leech really uh really carrying the toy there just, that just really absolutely great looking like a savage <laughs> oh my goodness it's really impressive so we have over here on dan's side dan is consulting uh connor's list really smart thing to do he wants to see what's good or not and dan decides to bring in this uh thorm of amethyst which i think is pretty heads up because i think as we saw you know the the taxing effect of thorn i think can really do a lot to try to slow down that kind of you know overwhelming amount of uh, removal and planeswalkers that connor can bring um, yeah definitely yeah. is he bringing in uh any of his sweepers and i guess three he, he it think. looks like if i'm not mistaken it looked like he did go ahead and reach for one of those um, okay. I believe it's the one. Well, maybe, but well, perhaps he didn't. Actually, I think it's still on the sideboard. Um, so, I, what about? I was gonna say. Uh, so, sorry, sorry. Go sorry. No, no, good. Go ahead. I was gonna say Connor right now looks like he's pulling all of his Davriels and Shrink Maw, as well as a uh, Traverse or two. Gotcha. And he has right now he has his uh, fourth Lingering Souls, Kitchen Finks, Gonti, uh, Garrick Relentless, Rex Sage, and Maelstrom Pulse. Oh all my goodness, in. those are. Those are he's all got, hammers. Those are hammers yeah, he's in the got, matchup. He's got a whole lot to do in this matchup. So I, I think that I think game two and three are going to be really close. I think uh, if Connor can leverage these really powerful cars he's bringing in, right? Yeah, I think it's going to be really hard for Dan to really be able to that totally, uh, totally make makes up sense. for it. Makes sense. And and uh, he's actually and he is reaching for the uh, third path as well. That he's, makes uh, sense. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, the funny thing is uh, Shriek Moss says uh, kill a non-black creature, and that's, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, um, Dan's, or maybe Lotus's Dan, is a little <laughs> short on non-black creatures, and so kind of his whole back here. So, yeah. Um, we did, I did notice the um, bringing in the Flaying Tendrils. I think that's actually literally just a response to um, Lingering Souls. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I, like I said before, I do think Lingering Souls is probably uh, – connor's best threat in the matchup right so i think dan is smart to be able to pull something in to be able to deal with that yeah especially down games two and three uh connor's gonna have a full four copies absolutely. so he's he's yeah. ready to soul token it out that's <laughs> he's right. ready to go full full like old school, <laughs> old school out here. Just, oh my goodness <laughs> i just i can't get over it i keep saying it over and over again putrid leech and the lingering souls <laughs> just couldn't be beat i uh i'm i'm taken aback it's it's pretty incredible and, you know, that's what's so fun about these mid-range mirrors. You know, I think on paper, you could maybe argue that Dan is favored, uh, given the more efficient threats and the density of removal spells. But it's a mid-range mirror. Anything can happen. You know, anything can yeah, happen. It can go either way. You know, mid-range, that's just the story of mid-range mirrors. You know, it's uh, it's hard uh, to One hundred percent. Yeah. And Connor's got an interesting hand. Four lands. A little land heavy and a little threat light, considering he has Traverse, Path, and Garrick. 
There's only mm. non-land cards. Okay. So you send in that one back. Okay. There's a disciplined mole, I think. Very disciplined mole. Um, let's see. On, on Dan's side here, we've got Double Swamp, Aetherborn, Triple Chittering Rats, and a Geralt's Messenger. Wow. So, so if he pulls a, if he pulls another land, that will be pretty good, right? It's good. I, you know, I'm on the fence about this hand. I mean, Triple Chittering Rats is a little bit, you know... Um, it may lose its value, especially if you miss that third land drop on the play. Um, when yeah. we get the blackmail, I wonder if he's, he's just going to show them all three chittering show rats. Show triple chittering it. rats. <laughs> <laughs> That's Black, pretty great. Blackmail is one of the one of the funnest cards that just doesn't see any play any, at <laughs> all. It's just uh, always a good time. Um, we hit another two drop in Timoret, and we saw how good Timoret was in, in game one. So let's see if it gets any work done here. Uh, Connor's actually, he's piling up the removal. He's got a Verasco Golgari Queen. Unfortunately, uncastable right now. Mm. But he's also got uh, an Eliminate and Fatal Push. Gotcha. So he's he's got answers for days for Timurit. Gotcha. And we're back to and This is also where they were talking about before. Uh, last last game a little bit with the uh, five tick mana base mm. this is where i think it's coming into is again with a uh, connor he's stuck on two colors right now and i think a lar large part of that is we don't have access to the uh <laughs> to the full range of expensive mana base right right Ooh, so i think black i think connor needs here. to take this timer right if i was him i would i agree or he, i agree with that yep uh, he may also be he does have an eliminate, so he may just be taking uh so what he took chittering rats. So okay. he may uh just be planning on uh eliminating uh what's to say so timer it when he hits the board. Makes sense, yeah, makes sense there. I, I definitely agree. Uh you know, given the, the eliminate in hand, I think that is a lot better. Wow, Dan Dan drew a good one in uh a Grey Merchant and old Gary there, but we need to hit the lands to cast him, so uh we'll see we'll see if we can get there with it. Oh, interesting. We eliminate the... That, yeah, that's an interesting that's choice. An interesting and choice. he knows that he has a timer. Right. I don't know if I would have done that. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that one. All right, well, Dan's doing what he's got to do. He's putting a ton of pressure here on the play. So let's see. So if uh, Connor hits a land here, he's going to be able to Vraska. And he did it. Let's see what do you do you just do you just take care of the um the Gross messenger there there probably right yeah yeah it does mean losing the Vraska though unfortunately unfortunately it does and then now connor's just down to just purely top decking here and you know yeah uh namely we have one of our better top decks in traverse the uven wall that's being just a dead draw here um potentially during wildwood it got got turned on there by putting planeswalker in the bin but we have the timoret to clear up the the yard there so yeah So Connor really needs a uh, removal spell for this timer, right, I think. Well, we drew and a good oof. one. We drew a really, yeah, that, really that's good really one. That's really good. <laughs> this, I'm telling that's... you, this Lash Rise, don't count it out. Don't count Dude, it out. Lash Rise is a five-tick all-star. It's a five-tick uh, all-star. For mono-black devotion. <laughs> <laughs> it is Every, just, it just uh... It's just plus, uh, plus one, plus one per land you control. It's right. <laughs> Seems really good. Seems really, really good. Yeah, uh, we just flooded out pretty hard here on Connor's side. And he has yeah, he's just drawing Wildwood, two lands in a row. But, uh, I think starting Wildwood's uh, already going to be in chump block duty, and oh man, we just ripped the fatal push. Yeah, it's, so it's, just it's a bad. little outclassed. Yeah, yeah, so that that means uh, Dan's got this one. He does. And this is kind of where I, what I was expecting game. Uh, this is kind of what I think the other side of the matchup goes. This is how Dan I think wins yep. is uh, he's able to just keep Connor under control and right. uh, get in there with some big top end stuff like a uh, last ride. Absolutely. Never thought I would say that. <laughs> get in there with his last ride <laughs> you know you know it's just the classic in modern you know um we get we get schooled by the uh, putrid leech but we hit him back with the last rise you know it's just the yeah, tale as old as time in modern <laughs> <laughs> oh man so dan's looking at the sorcerer's spyglass i think he's looking for an answer to some planeswalkers um I do, uh, I do think that's a uh, interesting inclination, but um, I think he potentially can handle a lot of that pretty easily on his own. Um, I, uh, I kind of, but... 
I was gonna say I don't really like that very much, just considering uh, Connor only has two. Like Connor only has a one of Raska and a one of Garrick. Correct. So correct. he, it's not like it'd be one thing if he had like the full playset of Vraska's or something like that, and like a Garrick on top of it. Mm. Well, just having uh, two, I feel like that's a little, a little overzealous by Dan. That's unless I guess he could be thinking uh, he kept Davriel in. Yeah, I mean, it could that, that definitely is a consideration there, and you know, maybe from from Dan's perspective, he's like, well, he lands the Davriel, and like. I, um, you know, I don't know, you know, I don't have an immediate answer to it, and we're empty-handed because it's a mid-range mirror, and I lose a lot of life. Maybe he's thinking something along those lines. But yeah. even then, though, actually, I take that back completely, right? Because Sorcerer Spyglass just turns off activated abilities. <laughs> the Davriel will still deal that damage because it's a uh, 2019 design, so it's uh, <laughs> it's the static ability on that Planeswalker. You got so. you got that fire design. <laughs> got that got that fire design. So you know, Sorcerer so... Spyglass not doing anything about it. Also, what do you think of uh, Connor? He's only pulled one discard spell, and in regular modern, at the very least, it's definitely a uh, the the status quo is to pretty much remove all in the mid range uh, mashups. That's how I always play it. So, what do you think of uh, what do you think of him keeping all of those discard spells in? Well, I do think that there are some hammers that are really hard to deal with. You know, I'm thinking about cards with really explosive enter the battlefield abilities, maybe Great Merchant. You know, maybe um, a card, even a card like, um, you know, Garal's Messenger. So I think mm -hmm. that he maybe just wants to find, I need to an answer it in the hand and not on the battlefield, because a lot of those cards, they hit the battlefield and the damage is done, you know? Mm -hmm. So I do, uh, I do gotta say, I'm not sure about Connor's decision of what the bottom there. Kept mm -hmm. uh, Traverse, Eliminate, and the Chromatic Star in two lands. Uh, he bottomed the Blackmail, and I don't remember what the other one was. Oh, and I don't remember what the other one was, but uh, I, I was thinking he was going to keep Blackmail over the Traverse because, oh, like, okay. he's so far away from turning it on. Mm, fair, fair. Yeah, I mean, potentially maybe, you know, Connor's thinking, you know, I'm, I may draw some bigger spells, so I just need to, like, even Traversing for a basic land is, like, totally fine, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it just fix my colors. Yeah. Um, that potentially could be, you know, also Blackmail's not good on turn one, and that's the thing that yeah. makes it so much worse than Thoughtseize, you know? We're, uh, we definitely take some big downgrades when we go into five ticks modern. Yeah. Um, and so that's that is certainly one of them. You know. I think so, a th I think a thought sees is three to four times the, uh, the yeah. budget in itself. <laughs> that's right. I think thought sees would be about uh, yeah uh, tr triple or quadruple your entire budget for the format. So, um, you know, yeah. <laughs> it looks like Dan is checking out uh checking out uh connor's list right now right. seeing what he's uh seeing what he could be bringing in yeah well i think you got to consult that i think that's really smart um you know try to be aware of what the outs are uh really funny thing about this thorn of amethyst is that uh did uh, connor continue to keep in the rex age yes he did that that rex age targeting a thorn of amethyst i mean are we just living in the the golden age of <laughs> magic playing or what that is that is also <laughs> something i never thought i would see <laughs> if, if that ends up happening <laughs> right so Connor is just uh, tutoring up a basic land here. Makes sense. He just needs With to hit the, his land uh, draw. Yeah. Super important. You know, I mean, if he we... has he has drawn nothing but lands so far as oh, well, though. Brutal. Yeah. I mean, so that's... he pulled he's pulled the uh, brush lands and an evolving wilds, oh. and he drew a swamp off of that uh, chromatic star. Yeah, that's you know that's just the kiss of death in the mo you yeah know, the um excuse me the uh, mid range mirror you know it's uh, you need to hit that gas. I mean, hopefully we just go land Siege Rhino, you know? We just, Siege Rhino takes over the game, we'll see. You know, the old CG boy, he, he wasn't, he's not what he used to be, you know, back in, uh, what was that, 2016 or 2017 when he was... Back uh, in the heydays of uh, <laughs> the Dark Cure block. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> but you know what? I was watching a game, I was watching the Swiss rounds with Connor playing, and it was a game, it was a nice, fun, fun back and forth, you know, trading blows. Siege Rhino off the top is just GG, man. It's just like, wow. Yeah. The old guy still got it, you know. He's just <laughs> doming on his opponent for three, coming with Trample. God, card's so good. Like, Oof, another Chittering another Rats. Chittering for, Rats uh, might just put this and, away yeah. here. Yeah, because we need to Yeah, he's through. just going to be slowing down uh, Connor too much. Yeah. Cause, cause so Connor is going for the Eliminate, and that's, uh, that's his only non-land card he has. That's a, just a brutal trade is chittering rats you have to eliminate it and then the opponent falls up with another chittering rats it's just like oh it's such a beating it's insane what this little guy can do you know i do want to point out too that uh again i feel like 
part of the reason why Connor had to mull so deep this game was uh, the five ticks, like the five tick budget for mana base right. and everything. Like right. it's trying to stretch the three colors out is definitely a lot harder on a, <laughs> yes on nothing but a pain lands and basics. <laughs> you know, and that's really you know Dan is really you know leveraging his advantage here with just being the cleanest mana base in the format. I mean, you know, if we think about it. Uh, all of our other competitors have a lot of pain lands, have a lot of utility lands, but I'm I if I'm not correct me if I'm wrong, um, Fjord, but I'm pretty sure uh, Dan's the only one with just clean all swamps, and then he's got a what leech ridden swamp, and he's got a witch's cottage. Both are actually still swamps. So uh, I believe he is the only one in the top eight with that. Yeah, yeah, just absolutely, and you know that can't that advantage cannot be um, understated. You know that's. Uh, really just a powerful thing to leverage in a format where um you know i was brewing around and i was like a temple garden is like half your budget and it's just like i gotta get yeah. kidding me you know it's like that's just such a dificult workaround when you're trying to make you know a multicolored deck so these the monocolor deck um the the mana base itself is a huge advantage so uh connor has pulled a path and he just pulled a gaunti so okay. he's gonna be able to get a two three death touch blocker down okay and he's gonna be able to pass something so he's uh this is is digging him out right and now is digging him back out of the uh spot he was in a little bit plus gonti's pretty sick you know i mean gonti can get something good he's looking at some sweet options for the gun yeah by the way this uh, some... dross messenger and ravenous Cho i like the idea of the ravenous Choop i was about Cabra. to say i think yeah. you gotta get mr choops in there you know like the old choop get you a two two blocker that'll be able to trade with the chittering rats <laughs> yep uh dross messenger isn't bad though just because it's going to be a body that's hard for uh, dan to deal with that's true because he does because he doesn't have the uh exile uh removal like path Fjord, are we smelling oh. it? Are we smelling a little uh, comeback here? <laughs> the that, comeback? That smell, it might, might, maybe. There, I, I had written off Connor here completely, but I think... Yeah, there, 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 there may not be any sad Zan today. Maybe <laughs> Abzan, maybe some happy Zan. <laughs> maybe some happy Zan, that's right. <laughs> Always nice when you win a game. You're like, whoa, I won a game with Abzan. This is crazy. In the year 2020, you know, it's, uh, it's something. All right, so we're sending... So he's holding Timer at back. Right. Oh, because he didn't want him just to get killed? Uh, that, and then I'm thinking, you get oh, the path? I was thinking he was going to path one of them. Wow. It looks like he's okay with trading in the Vraska. Huh. You know, I have to be honest, Fjord, I don't know how I feel about that. I felt like Vraska was one of our ways to grind back in there, you know? Drawn another yeah, I, I definitely thought so, too. Yeah. I was, I was, I was definitely expecting a path on one of the, uh, I do too. two Aetherborns. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We see a bit of a pause here. Oh, that is that, pa that pause is on uh, Dan's side, okay. I was wondering if not maybe um, um, Connor had meant to do something there and had not. But no, it looks like Dan is trying to decide if he wants to run out this messenger or not. Yeah. And so, well, in part though, uh, Connor's holding of the path has been rewarded by dealing with this uh, draw messenger and like cleanly. Very true. Yeah. And now with just with what Ooh. we have, and he just pulled a pulse, so he can oh take out. So he's just massively gosh. rewarded for oh all of his sequencing God, there. A pulse is such a sick draw oh my what do we need we don't need that Verasco. we're just gonna top deck the pulse i mean whew. yeah so he's gonna pass the dross messenger it looks like right now oh my and then gosh. next turn then next turn oh no oh, he's holding off okay, on it okay okay fjord fjord we're gonna get yelled at in chat we're gonna get yelled at in chat he only had one mana up normally that's good enough to cast a path mm. to exile thorn of amethyst, thorn of amethyst. <laughs> i missed it <laughs> we both did Oh, not, <laughs> not on my radar at all. <laughs> and I want to say that's exactly what happened when I played against Dan in the tournament, because <laughs> I just did not expect that at all. <laughs> oh man! All right, all right. Keyboard warriors, hold your fire. We are sorry. <laughs> that's why we're in the booth. That's why we're in the booth. That's not why we're down here playing in the finals, though. You know. <laughs> that's, that's exactly why I didn't make it. <laughs> This Thorn of Amethyst, I think, will may potentially just win this game here because what could happen is if Dan decides to fire off the Agonizing Remorse, then he'll snipe away that Maelstrom Pulse, and that will just be kind of devastating, to be frank with you. Like, that's... Um, yeah. yeah. If, we'll if Dan, Dan does, does the Agonizing Remorse, that, that's yeah. probably game. That's if probably he doesn't, game. If he doesn't, though, that's going to be huge for... Uh... Oh, man. He's clicking on the oh he clicked on the ash yawk and he unclicked it. Probably he's probably debating what to what to play right now. Yeah. 
He must, you know what he, I bet Dan's thinking, I bet Dan's like, well, if he had anything in hand, he would have fired it off, right? What's this agonizing yeah. remorse going to do? Oh my gosh, this is crazy. So Dan's going with the uh, He's doing it. Yeah, that, oh my that, gosh. Could, that could be him losing the game. That could literally like, be him just losing the game. Cleanly answering the double uh, gifted Aetherborn is just going to be so big. Then he has the Chupacabra to be able to clearly uh, yep. take up the board, yep. like to wipe up uh, the timer right on board. Honestly, like it's gonna from be Connor's side, we're a few top decks away from just just putting this thing in. And you just pulled a branch walker. That's a good one. That's a good one. So I, it looks like he's going for the pulse though right now. Yeah, which... I guess you could get really greedy and cast the branch walker. If you hit an untapped land, you'd live the absolute dream. But I think you have to be safe here and just fire this off. Yeah, no, I think I think just de dealing with the two threats is the yeah. right way. Because mm -hmm. now, uh, so he's gonna. I think he's swinging in. I want to say he's gonna attack Ashiok. Yeah. That's probably yeah, because like now it's a timer. It can swing back for two, but it's like okay, it's not it's not nearly as big of a deal Correct. as having like the full six. Right. Right. Ooh, we drew the game. That was that was, huge. that was that was a huge moment in the game. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. <laughs> that little micro decision. Talking about decisions from the last game, right? No kidding. Like man. this was. Uh... Well, we got the big man coming down. There's coming... Gary. Ooh, that. Man. That's one way to swing back in. Yeah. This, Quick six life point swing. This Chupacabra might not be enough, you know? I mean, we're down to six. I guess, I don't know. We'll see how this plays out. I'm, this is pretty thrilling. Like, any top yeah, he's got, here. Yeah, he's got draws. Swamp is not a draw, though. That's going to do it for him. No, Swamp's great so. because we can double spell now. So we can put out mm. both Branch Walker and the Chupacabra. Is Troopsing? I would hit a uh, Gary, I would but I don't know Gary. what he's gonna do. I'd yeah. hit Gary if I if if I were. Uh... Also, if we hit Gary, we can kill the Ashiok, which may be relevant. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Fjord, I got some really bad news. Yes. Really bad news. The Ashiok milled over a Siege Rhino. Oh we no! Are, <laughs> we are gonna, not going to, get see, to see the Rhino. We are not going to see the Rhino <laughs> this match. I am kind no. of. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, Dan? I, you know what? You have to kill Ashiok for that crime alone. Am I right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you gotta get you gotta get him out of there. Get him out of there. <laughs> He's. <laughs> oh wow! That was that was for tendrils. the siege rhino. <laughs> that was for the siege rhino. We drew a playing tendrils. Um, that's pretty good. That's a nice two for one. Um, do we do that or we play second Timoret? Or no, we can do both. Yeah, we can flame tendrils into Timoret. That's pretty good. Um, good. yeah, I think, I think that's really good. I think Dan's, uh, well, I mean, yeah, Dan's lines, Dan, uh, Dan's draws has been pretty good. The, uh, Gary into flank tendrils are you really keeping him in, especially with, uh, Connor being so low on life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It might just come down to, um, you know, little, little two, two Timoret and then, um, you know, uh, we find a removal spell and it, you know, goes the distance. We only need to hit him three times with this Timoret. Which is definitely yeah, possible. Yeah. Um, well, I do want to point out that uh, Dan's at so such a high life. That's true. That uh, Connor's not going to be uh, winning this, like very quickly. True. Yeah. If he wins, it's going to be a ways down the road, and we need to kind of top deck our way out here. And... Yeah, like that. Dan's got time to be able to figure out. Yeah. To be able to draw a couple answers type deal, like whatever he really needs. For sure. For sure. So. Uh. So Dan needs to find another card then, so uh, Timurat doesn't die from this flame tendrils, right? Yeah, he wanted to put the devotion up so it won't just die, correct? And he's eating his own graveyard just to pad his life total more. Um, you know, I mean, maybe there is some pressure being assembled here with the uh, Stirring Wildwood. Oh, we drew maybe the best card we could have drawn. Maybe the best card we could have drawn. Oh. We have yeah. a lot of life <laughs> To, to, yeah, to that's a really here. good one. <laughs> that's just we are drawing many cards off of this. I ooh, that is a really good one to have right one. now. And now we just we hit the the Falmire Knight, and we could even play it as a one one Death Toucher if we really want to. Yeah, this is yeah, this is. I think yeah, I think I think by the time Connor was able to kind of stabilize, get get his board get a board stabilized, get fresher assembled, I think Dan was just he was too low of a life, and I think Dan was just too high of a life total. Yeah. Was, pretty much what happened there especially drawing that blood fast i mean that's just yeah that's so sick you're at 33 life with a blood fast like are you kidding i that's that yeah that's that just seems amazing yeah and we we blackmail which is nice we get to get the flaying tendrils but you know i mean it's 
might be a little too little too late at this point. You know, I'm not 100% sure where we go from this point. Funny enough, just the 1-1 one, one Death Toucher in Falmire Knight's just really annoying. Like, it's just going to be in the yeah. way. And, um, yeah. So, like, like, I think, oh, all right. He does attack, which is interesting. I think, yeah, maybe Dan all just right, takes he it. Block. He just goes, yeah. hey, man, I don't care. I'm going to hit you back. I'm at, I'm at 35 life. Right. I don't need life. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs life, you know? I mean, come on. All right, we're drawing cards. All right, another Thorn of Amethyst. Uh, the first one's great. The second one, uh, not so much. You know, it's a little overkill at that point. Yeah. All right. Especially at this point, too, when uh, you're the only one who has cards. Right. You're the only one who's realistically playing multiple spells. It's only going to be true. hurting you at this point. Very true. So, I mean, we kind of flooded there. We hit we hit it Swamp, Thorn, Swamp. I mean, that's not what we want to see. So. Oh, uh, no, definitely. But yeah. uh, So he's just attacking this. So do you take the... Uh, Wildwood trade with the one one death touch. I don't think so. Like, I think you're gonna take this because I think you can pretty confidently fire up the uh, stirring wildwood. Ooh, so he just pulled the path, so he can deal with okay. uh, one of, so he can deal with one of uh, Dan's threats okay. here. Do we just fire this off, or do we try to be patient with it? Um, considering what Connor knows right now, uh, he doesn't know anything in his in uh, Dan's hand. I would probably uh, hold it. Yeah. I would probably... Oh, uh, he's just going to spire it off at Tamarind, it looks like. Okay. Keep her fair. And... Yeah. No, I, I don't think I don't think there was a really wrong decision there. Yeah. No, no, he no, doesn't no. want to let uh, Tamarind gain any more life, get any more value going. True. Interesting thing about the uh, Stirring Wildwood as well is that if we want to fire it up this turn cycle, we have to tap the Brushland, which deals with the damage. Yeah. <laughs> at five life, it's kind of... I don't know. Looks like he is activating it one more time, just gain some life. Yeah, gain some life. Man, this uh, Timurent and Argle's Bloodfast is quite the combo. I mean, it really is just something coming together. It's I don't know, is something like that even is that even legal in other formats? I mean, obviously it's legal in <laughs> modern. You know, I you know one might call it but... one might one might call it the Splinter Twin it, the, of uh, the five ticks. <laughs> five ticks. <laughs> Timurent and Argle's Bloodfast, just just you know. <laughs> Man, the terror of the format. All right, let's see what we're drawing here. Oh, we hit a fatal push. That's pretty good. Ooh, that's really yeah. good. I mean, a blood fat. Oh, and we hit a we hit a Gralf's messenger. I mean, you know, this is the thing. Like, the blood fast was gonna hit us gas eventually. Yeah. I mean, we can't we well, can't we can't brick forever. <laughs> yeah, he was at so much life that yeah, he just had so he had so many draws he could hit yeah, stuff no with. Kidding. And I believe I don't think we made a land drop yet. Correct? Like, we can go swamp. Uh, no, he can still yeah he can still play the swamp. Yeah, so he can go messenger into fatal push here. I'm pretty sure. Looks like he's swinging in. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's it's... see. So Dan, so uh, Connor doesn't take the trade on the Wildwood again, assumedly. Right nope. Now. Looks like he's going for it this time. Yeah. Okay. So he takes the damage. So Connor fatal pushes. Mm, yeah. Hits the hits him for one. Draw messages him down to one. Oh, and that's just yeah. That's just basically GG so, at this point. I mean. Yeah. I don't know what we could draw. I mean. We're just we're empty-handed too. The uh, single draw stuff. I don't really see it's happening here. He needs to find a path for the messenger. He needs to, he found right. a land of war wastes, so we found yeah. a pain land. So that's yeah, not that's, gonna be that uh... ain't it. Because the the thing about Gralf's messenger in this spot is if you block it, you kill the Gralf's messenger and it drains. But then it drains you. Drains you or again. you don't block yeah. it, you just die. So it's uh, actually just uh, just kind of I think just game here. But we'll we'll see. If yeah, he, Connor just happened, sent off the GGs. He sent off the GGs. No Fjord out. Dan's computer didn't disconnect. And, uh, no, it did not. And uh, another, another, another great match in the books. Yeah, that was, that was really Dan. good. Really well fought. Really well played on both sides. You got to see. Yeah, that was that was a really cool match too, because you got to see kind of the uh, power, the power of both of their decks, like both like the lingering souls and future leech in game one. Really, why uh, Connor got to show off why he was in the top eight, and then the second two games. Dan kind of got that chance too, so I thought that was really cool. It really, really was. One, a great game, and I'm excited to see the next one. Wow, we just came out of that mid-range showdown, that mid-range battle, and Dan, maybe Lotus's Dan has emerged victorious. Uh, Dan, how are you feeling coming out of that match? Well, my opponent Connor really gave me a, a, a heck of a fight, and hats off to. Uh, to them with their deck, I 
you know, I think going into the match, I was expecting it was going to be close, but I felt like I might be able to leverage my sort of streamlined uh, devotion, or like pseudo aggressive strategy to my advantage uh, in the face of what were in Connor's case, like a lot of just more powerful um, non-creature spells than uh, than anything my deck is able to to do. So, yeah, just I w- I'm I was happy with how it played out, but there were definitely a lot of moments where uh, Connor's deck got to do what it was trying to do. Yeah, it was it was such a pleasure on my end to see both decks kind of doing what it's supposed to do, and uh, and it was really really neat uh, seeing both sides of it. So you're going into the semifinals. Congratulations, and you're going up against guys. Uh, is it prowess deck? Uh, how are you feeling about this matchup? I do feel confident in the matchup, but I do also want to say that I have a lot of respect for Guy as a player, and I think that the way that he's constructed his deck is uh, definitely going to uh, give him fast draws. Like, he has a lot of consistency with his deck, and I admire that, and I'm definitely going to be trying to watch out for... uh, basically just getting tempoed out and I'm gonna have to make sure I I don't, if I if possible, keep bad hands. Uh, I need to draw my removal spells for sure. Um, and I, th- yeah, I am happy to be facing Guy um, as opposed to uh, Bobby um, in the semifinal match. Uh, in the Swiss rounds, uh, I did lose a match to Bobby that was pretty close, and I think a lot of a large part of that was the uh, the counter spells that Bob was able to bring. So with Guy, just the burn spells and creatures, I feel a little more confident. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see the match.